we can find lots of patterns of organization in nature, and nature doesn't know much about physics. If we look to a snowflake, there is a very interesting pattern there, but the snowflake doesn't know why he's in this way. Human towers are the same. Two hundred years ago, people doesn't know much about physics, but they found the best way to build very high towers. When I first saw human towers, when I was a child, the first thing it impressed me was how it's it possible to wear all this weight without breaking a bone or falling with a very big injury. That was magic. When I grow, finally I understand how is it possible. It's a little bit magic, yes, but it's physics. When we build human towers, we need very different people. We need, in some places, very thin people, in other places, very heavy ones. If we want to go higher and higher, it's important not to put a very big load. We can find a, a very good analogy between human towers and churches. When they begin to construct very tall churches and they want to make the, the walls very thin, they need to assist these walls by the fire batteries. That's the same thing with human towers. Building a 10-level tower with four people in each flat. Each one that is in the base, it has about 400 kilos on it. If we see it as the wall tower, can be about three elephants of load. So we need to distribute all this weight evenly because if we put three elephants over one person or we put 400 kilos on one single person, it will not be possible to support that. When you see a human tower falling and you think they are falling in the same way as a diver is falling to the water or even someone that is falling from a very big building to the floor, Obviously, you, you will think that it probably will, will die. This is because when we fall from a very high to the floor, the floor has no capacity to absorb the energy. But that's not the same case in human towers. The base is compact, but it's not a very hard surface that has the, the capability to absorb a great amount of energy. About half of the energy can be absorbed by the, the base. But most important, normally the fall is not directly from the top to the base. The human tower normally falls over itself. So people are falling one over each other. They're accelerating the fall, but also fragmenting the energy. It's different to have a very big impact rather than 10, 12, very little impacts. We used to, to say that Castellers, the people who are doing human towers, are normal people doing incredible things. And this is only possible because we have a common goal, all the people working in team trying to do the same thing. And it's the same that happens in nature. An ant is not able to do a big building, but many, many ants are able to do that. Working in team, many, many people, many castellers, train it, coordinate it in balance, will be able to construct a very big human tower. All cultures want to climb to the top of something. When we are child, we, we try to, to climb to other people. And when we know that's, that's, that's difficult, and, and this fragility is what makes human towers so spectacular. 